The Departed, a great film. Nicholson steals the show. Every line is just amazing. I love when he's dealing with the Chinese, making a deal, and he looks at them to hand over the money, and he says, No, no ticky, ticky, no, no laundry. laundry. Hope everybody is doing well. And today is Mob Movie Monday. Favorite of all of you. Um, you know, I get so many requests for so many different films. Today we're going to do one of my favorites and certainly one of all of your favorites because I get asked about this all the time. And that is The Departed. And a great movie, really great movie. Uh, one of my favorite and uh, really because of Jack Nicholson. I mean, I think Jack Nicholson, who starred as Frank Costello, just happened to be his name, uh, he's like a Joe Pesci in these movies. He steals every scene that he's in. He's just terrific. But a little background on the film. Um, this was a Martin Scorsese. Uh, he directed the film. It was actually based on an earlier film that was produced in Hong Kong called Infernal Affairs. And uh, Marty got a hold of the script and liked it and did his Marty thing. And I think originally um, uh, there was a couple other people involved in it. And I think Brad Pitt was supposed to be in the movie. He did sign on as a producer or something later on. <clears throat> it wasn't an actor. But, uh, you know, it was produced, uh, I, was, uh, I, I think it was shot in 2005, came out in 2006. And uh, the cast is great. Of course, whenever Martin Scorsese directs a film, uh, you know, he's got the cream of the crop as far as his pick of actors and actresses. And, uh, you know, who's he have here? Jack Nicholson, Leonardo DiCaprio, Matt Damon, Mark Wahlberg, uh, Vera Familia, you know, all great people, great names, and they all obviously do a great job. So, you know, the film is, um, you know, it's fictional. You know, it's the Irish mob in Boston, but it's a fictional film. Uh, the uh, Costello uh, character is based upon, very loosely based upon Whitey Bulger. And uh, the Matt Damon character is very loosely based upon the FBI agent that was Whitey Bulger's, uh, Bulger's handler, uh, John Connolly. But that's about it. Everything else is fictionalized. And um, it's really, a, it's kind of a unique story because it's really, the whole story is about, there are two moles, you know, informants, moles. One is in Costello's crew, the Irish crew, and the other is in the police department. And throughout the whole film, both sides are trying to find out who the mole is. And basically that's it. You know, that's the thread that goes through the whole movie, but uh, it takes a lot of different twists and turns and uh, really a lot of great scenes, you know, that, that I really enjoyed. And you know, one of my favorite characters, I gotta tell you, his name is Ray Winstone. He plays Mr. French and he is uh, Costello. Um, his right-hand man, and he, he's a great actor. He does a great job. He's so authentic in this film. And again, for me, from my perspective, you know, the uh, characters have to be authentic. They have to be real. Now, I think in this case, Jack Nicholson, he just creates the character. So he makes it whatever he wants to be, and he's just terrific in every film. And he made every scene that he's in is just, it lights it up. I mean, he's terrific. But let's go through it scene by scene. And uh, if you haven't seen it, you got to tune in. You, you can probably get it just about anywhere. I don't know if it's on Netflix, probably, but if not, you'll find it online. But it's uh, really a great film. You'll enjoy it, trust me. Pretty violent film and a lot of graphic stuff going on in there, but uh, great movie. So, you know, starting at the beginning, the interesting thing is Jack Nicholson, Frank Costello, is grooming his mole from a young age. He meets him uh, in a, uh, you know, a store or kind of a restaurant. And from that point on, we see a couple of scenes where he's actually grooming him. And what he wants to do at some point, he wants to get him to become a member of the police department. And that's going to be his mole. You know, there's one scene in there where uh, he's teaching him different things and he's talking to him. And uh, he says one thing to him that was, was so funny for me. He had so many great lines, but this line was great. He says, just Jack Nicholson talking, when I was in Catholic school, they said to me, you have two choices here in Boston. You can become a cop or you, beco you can become a criminal. A cop or a criminal. And his response to that was uh, classic. He says, when you're facing a loaded gun, 
what's the difference? <laughs> the way he delivers the line is just terrific. That was a cool scene, the scene that he starts to groom his mole, you know, to become a, uh, a member of the police force and his eyes and ears within the force. And, you know, going back to the Whitey Bulger story, remember, you know, sometimes the thinking on the street is, hey, if I have somebody within the department that's on my side, gives me information, helps me against my enemies, what's wrong with that? And don't think that that doesn't happen because it does. You know, one particular case, I mean, I had a lot of friends. I'm not saying everybody was on the payroll, but yes, there were resources that I had within the police department and uh, politically also. There was one uh, specific precinct in Brooklyn that at two o'clock in the morning, I was able to go there and, and look through files. I mean, so that's how these things work sometimes. So it's always good to have a mole, a friend. In New York, remember, we had 750 made guys. A lot of us had friends or relatives that were police department people, law enforcement people. So as a result of those relationships, we were able to get some things done, get some special treatment. In the end, it all goes to hell anyway. But I'm just saying, as you go throughout that life, you know, things like that do occur. So that part is not unrealistic. Next scene or that was great was when DiCaprio is sitting with Martin Sheen, who plays a, a captain, he's great, and Mark Wahlberg, who his assistant, his underling, I think he's a sergeant, wherever he might be. And they're now grooming DiCaprio, who is in training. He was a cadet, or whatever you call that. And they're saying, you know, you got a messed up family, but we're gonna make you our mole, and we want you to infiltrate, you know, the mob on the street, specifically the Irish mob, Frank Ostella's crew. And uh, it's a good scene because Mark Wahlberg, from the beginning, he's a real wise guy with DiCaprio. He just, he doesn't treat him with respect or anything like that. And, you know, so they're like, they're abrasive to each other right off the bat. You can see that DiCaprio really doesn't want to do this, but hey, he, he really doesn't have a choice. So he becomes the mole that now somehow has to get into the good graces of uh, Frank Costello's crew so that he can become the eyes and ears of the police department. So it's a great scene there. You know, um, so how does DiCaprio do that? Well, he's in a restaurant one day and he's sitting with French, Mr. French, you know, uh, uh, Costello's right-hand man. And uh, he purposely gets into a fight with somebody, hits somebody with a bottle of some, I forget, a glass, I think, knocks him out. And uh, French, he's in there and he kind of breaks it up because he wasn't supposed to hit that guy, he was an important guy. And French, he steps in. But as a result, Frenchy kind of sees something in him, and that's when DiCaprio is starting to move into, you know, his position as a mole in the family. You know, uh, another great scene, uh, DiCaprio does it again. He's in a, another store when two Italian guys, you know, um, from Providence, Rhode Island, uh, they're kind of moving in, they're trying to extort a, a shop owner out of some money. And, uh, you know, he, he makes a disparaging remark about the Irish guys, the two, these two guys do, one of the two guys do. And DiCaprio is there and he walks over to them, boom, he hits one of them, there's the other good scene, good fight scene, knocks him the heck out, throws him into the soda machine, whatever the heck he does. And uh, that's kind of the intro that gets him to meet up with Frank Costello, uh, the Jack Nicholson character. That scene is great because now Costello first meets him and he berates him. He says, you know, you hit two Italian guys and the only shot you got is if I protect you. If not, they're gonna come here and kill you. And, uh, you know, DiCaprio is playing the, the, playing the role like, hey, I don't need you. I can do it on my own, whatever. And, you know, again, Nicholson just lights up this scene. He created his own character here. Believe me, he did. So, but long story short, Frenchie's there too. They take him in the back room and they wanna make sure that he's not wired, that he's not uh, an informant. So they frisk him, you know, they go through everything, they frisk him. And um, he's got a cast on his arm because he hurt his, uh, you know, his arm when he was beating these two guys up. And um, they put his cast on the table because uh, uh, Costello tells uh, French, he says, put his, put his arm on the table. And they break the cast open. And he says, oh, they're clean, no problem. But Nicholson isn't happy with that. Costello's not happy. He takes a shoe, I believe, and he starts banging the broken wrist and saying, are you a rat? Are you an informant? Are you an informant? And uh, DiCaprio's in pain. He's screaming, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. It's a great scene, I got to tell you. Again, unique, you know, in Nicholson style, just unique scene. And uh, by the way, Scorsese won Best Director for this film, won a bunch of awards. But, you know, Scorsese, I mean, just about every one of his films, he's up for an award. But he won the Academy Award for Best Director on this one. Well-deserved. It was great. Another great scene is... Uh, 
Again, Nicholson is talking to Matt Damon, who is now his mole. Matt Damon's giving him, you know, information. Nicholson is in a robe, Costello. And he finishes up that conversation, and DiCaprio is there. And he goes inside, and he sits down with his robe on, and he's eating. And um, he, got a, he has a plastic bag with somebody's hand chopped off in it with a ring on it. And uh, as he's talking to uh, uh, DiCaprio and making a point to him, he's pulling the ring off the finger, and DiCaprio is looking at it like, you know, he's, he's in disgust, like this guy's a maniac. He pulls the ring off, he gives it to Frenchie, he says, give it to the wife of the deceased. And it's a, it's a great scene, the way they go back and forth. But again, I have to say this, because every scene that Nicholson, in, and Nicholson is in, he just lights it up. Now, you know, another interesting thing, you know, a la The Sopranos or whatever, and, and uh, analyze this, we always seem to get a psychiatrist or a therapist in all of these movies now. So now DiCaprio is going crazy, because in that last scene I described, he was wired. And he got so scared after he saw that, he runs into the bathroom, pulls off the wire, and he calls up uh, Martin Sheen and Wahlberg. He says, I ain't wearing a wire no more. That's it. If these guys catch me, they're going to chop me into little pieces, basically. Wouldn't wear a wire anymore. But after that, he's, you know, got panic attacks and all of that. So they put him with the psychiatrist, Vera Familia. And uh, she does a great job. I like her in, in every movie I've seen her in. And uh, so he starts this relationship, you know, with the psychiatrist. You know, coincidentally, Matt Damon, you know, sees the psychiatrist uh, in the building that they're in, you know, the law enforcement building, and he starts to get into a relationship with her, not as an analyst, but as a girlfriend. So while one mole is dating the psychiatrist, the other one is being treated by the psychiatrist. <laughs> you know, it's really great. Next great scene, um, DiCaprio now has tapes. He has tape recordings from Costello proving that Damon is, is a bad guy. And uh, so that starts to heat up. They start to feel each other out, like they're knowing that, you know, they're starting to identify one another. So again, DiCaprio now has the tapes. As, as we move along, he's got the tapes and he knows it's Damon. And um, what he does, he confronts Damon in a scene. On the, he calls him up first. He lets him hear the tape. He says, I got the tape. He says, I'm going to meet you in such and such a place. And he meets him on the rooftop, the same rooftop. I didn't get into this where uh, they threw Martin Sheen, you know, the, the mob guys threw Martin Sheen off the roof and they killed him earlier. It was a setup. But anyway, they go to that rooftop and DiCaprio, uh, who's not really a cop yet, is going to do a citizen's arrest on Damon because he's got him cold as the mole. Beats him up handcuffs him, it's a great scene, really roughs him up. DiCaprio does a great job, they always do, both of them. And um, he's taking him, he's gonna take him down in the elevator when another cop shows up. And uh, he don't know what to do because Damon, who is a cop and works with this guy, says, kill this guy. And DiCaprio's saying, no, I got proof, he's the mole. And the back and forth, back and forth, he says, I'm taking him in, I'm taking him in. So the, the cop backs off, they get in the elevator and they're heading down and Damon is kind of harassing DiCaprio, saying, yeah, sure, this is really going to work out. You think they're going to believe you? He said, you're in trouble. You're screwed up. And then all of a sudden, he says, you know what? Just kill me now, because he knows it's, it's done, done for him. He said, just kill me now. Get it over with. Great scene. They get to the bottom floor. The elevator opens up, and boom, DiCaprio gets shot in the head by another one of uh, Damon's uh, officers. And DiCaprio's dead, right? So now, um, you know, that's towards the end of the film. And uh, then the last scene of, of any real consequence. Oh, by the way, oh, by the way, listen, Nicholson's dead already. Who killed Nicholson? Damon killed him. That's another scene. And uh, he kills him because he finds out that he's an FBI informant. And Damon is now worried. He goes after Nicholson. He says, hey, because there was a setup, another, uh, another sting operation. And uh, he goes after him in a warehouse and he said, you're an FBI informant? I'm your mole, I'm doing all of this for you and you're an informant? And all he keeps asking him, am I in trouble? Do they know who I am? Do they know who I am? Do they know who I am? Finally, uh, Nicholson's gonna kill Damon, Damon shoots him first, Nicholson is dead. So you're keeping score, Nicholson is dead, Frenchie is dead in the same, you know, uh, sting operation. He got killed. Uh, and DiCaprio is dead now. So you got three gone already. So what happens? They have a funeral uh, for um, uh, whatever funeral it was at the time. I don't remember. And then uh, Damon figures, hey, I'm scot free. You know, Nicholson is dead. DiCaprio, who could have outed me, is dead. 
By the way, Vera Famiglia heard the tapes because DiCaprio let her hear the tapes, so she wants nothing to do with Damon. She knows that Damon's a turncoat, and uh, she wants nothing to do with him. Damon thinks he got away scot-free. It's all done. So we see him leaving. Uh, he's walking after the funeral. He's all happy. He walks into an apartment, opens the door, and there's Mark Wahlberg. Boom, shoots him dead. So Damon is gone. Wahlberg did it in civilian clothes, not as, a, not as an officer. And he walks out of the room, and basically that's it. So what happens if you're keeping score? Again, Nicholson's dead. Damon's dead, the one uh, mole. Uh, DiCaprio's dead, the other mole. And, uh, and, and that's it. They're all gone. Frenchie is gone. Everybody's gone. End result in these movies, nobody ever wins on the street side. It's always law enforcement, even law enforcement that's messed up. They always win, you know, um, but this is a great film. I'm not going to get into, you know, uh, preaching about it. But people, I got to tell you, when you look at this film, obviously look at for the entertainment value. But understand, even when even when law enforcement is messed up, you don't know who to trust anymore. You know, in our crew, we had guys, Greg Scarpa, you know, 20 years was an informant for the FBI, 20 years. Okay, who knows what information he gave him? You know, the mafia cops, okay? They were working along with mob guys on the street. They were moles, they were working along with mob guys on the street. You know, Willie Boy Johnson, cooperating for over 20 years. You know, so you don't know. In that life, you just don't know. You know, I tell, when I go tell these young people, and I do it not, you know, to promote or encourage street crime or gang violence or anything like that, I tell them just the opposite. You know, you got to get out of this stuff, man. It doesn't pay. But I always tell them, you want to do a crime, you want your best shot to, 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 to do it and pull it off, do it alone. That's it. Don't have anybody near you that can one day put you in trouble because you'll be surprised what happens on the street. It's a, it's a dirty business, people. Even for the best operations, the best organizations, it's a dirty business. So anyway, great film, The Departed. I highly suggest that you watch it if you haven't seen it yet. If you've seen it, go back and look at it again and really key in on Nicholson. Watch his lines, watch his dialogue, watch his hair. Look at everything about him. He's crazy. He's a madman in a film, loosely based on Whitey Bulger, but a great character on his own. So that's it. Again, thank you. Well over 350,000 subscribers. You keep coming on daily. Again, when we hit 500,000, and it's probably going to be within the next couple of months, we're going to have a huge giveaway for our subscribers. And I mean a huge one, okay? I promise you, the last one, a computer we gave away and a one hour talk with me, plus a whole bunch of other things. I'm having that talk very shortly. And, um, but when we hit 500,000, a huge giveaway, I promise you, you're gonna enjoy it. And we're gonna keep doing this. MichaelFrancis.com, our community is growing. We're well over 11,000 people encouraging one another. Uh, the coaching site is doing well. You know, business opportunities are happening for people within that site. So I encourage you to join. So that's it for today. I hope everybody is well. And how do I always leave you? Be safe, be healthy. God bless you, and I mean that. And I will see you next time.